Yeah, I guess we can go ahead and get started. So before we get into the activity, I think um, we can do a few quick intros. Um, and so I can start. Um, my name is Caitlin and I am a chemical engineer. Uh, I grew up in Georgia. I got my degree in chemical engineering at Georgia Tech. And then I moved out to the Bay Area uh, to start working at a consumer products company. Um, and then um, now I work on the battery engineering team at CELA Nanotechnologies. And I'm gonna hand it off to Laura. Hi, I'm Laura Gerber. Um, I also work at CELA Nanotechnologies as a chemist. I grew up in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and then I studied chemistry in college and grad school, went to Brandeis University for college and MIT for grad school. Um, I moved out to the Bay Area um, to work at Lawrence Berkeley National Lab. And then for the last several years, I've been working at Zila Nanotechnologies where I work on uh, developing new materials that store the charge uh, inside batteries. I'll hand it over to Elif. Hello, uh, my name is Elif Gurbuz. I am a process development engineer here at Sila. Uh, I grew up in Turkey and got my bachelor's in chemical engineering there. And then I got a PhD in chemical engineering in University of Wisconsin at Madison. And then I moved out to the Bay Area um, to work in R&D uh, for renewable chemicals and then um, joined Scylla a couple of years after that and currently working on developing processes to scale uh, to make our battery product. And then Maria. Yeah, uh, hi everyone. My name is Maria. Um, I am on the equipment team at Scylla. Uh, I studied mechanical engineering in uh, college and grad school. Um, and Sila is my first job after that. Um, yeah. Awesome. Thanks for the intros. And yeah, just a quick intro about Sila. So we're a battery materials company. And so what we do is we make materials that make lithium ion batteries um, higher energy density and longer cycle life than what's currently in your cell phone or your electric vehicle. So all of us are working in different areas of making the materials for the batteries. And um, there's also a lot of different kinds of ways that you can like get involved in a career in STEM. So we have people, as you're aware, who are uh, in chemistry or in mechanical engineering or chemical engineering, but we also have plenty of people who have like a physics background or electrical engineering, or we have plenty of software engineers that also work at CELA. So there's a lot of different paths um, to get to work in a career in STEM. Um, and yeah, with that, um, we can go ahead and get started with the activity. So before we really get into it, I wanna make sure that everyone has all of the materials, um, including the materials that were needed from home. So I'm looking at this worksheet now. Um, and then we've also got Laura, whose video we're gonna spotlight. Um, so you all can kind of see that the whole time that we're, that we're working through this. But on this list, uh, you should have a small bowl uh, or something to just mix your solution in. Uh, you should also have a small paper towel or a cloth towel. Um, you should have some salt. Uh, I just have some plain old, you know, iodized salt here um, and some white vinegar uh, and then just a little bit of water uh, and then a small spoon, a marker or a pen, a pair of scissors, and then all of the materials that came in the packet with this worksheet. So hopefully you all have uh, all of that set up already. And then using all of these materials, we're gonna walk through the steps of creating your very own battery. Uh, it's not a lithium ion battery, but it's a different kind of battery. Uh, and that battery is gonna power up an LED light bulb. Um, and so before we go through the, the actual activity, we're gonna talk a little bit about the components of a battery. And so on the other side of this worksheet, there are some definitions of the different components in a battery. 
And so, you know, overall, um, a, a battery is just a device that provides power. Um, and it converts, the power comes from converting chemical energy into electricity. And so that's what we're going to do with the materials that we have today. And then current is kind of the flow of electricity. So you can think of uh, like a river or something as an example of like current would be like a flow of uh, ions, um, like through a river uh, in a way. Um, and then uh, voltage we're going to talk about a little bit. And that's the electric force that causes current to flow. Uh, and voltage is a result of the difference in potential between the anode and the cathode, which are the negative and the positive sides of the battery. And then um, we, and the anode and the cathode are both types of electrodes. Uh, and the electrodes are just two halves of the battery that help store the charge. Um, and then the separator is a really important part of the battery, and that's a membrane that separates our positive and our negative side of the battery. And then the electrolyte is a solution that helps balance the charge when we have current flowing between the two electrodes. And so the components um, that we're going to use today um, are all kind of forms of anodes, cathodes, separators, and electrolytes. And so uh, we're about to get started uh, in the activity itself. And so I think if you have questions about if your you know, stuff is working, um, please feel free to put it in the, in the chat, I think, in the Q&A chat. Um, and we should be able to uh, answer your questions there. So with that, um, the first thing that we wanna do um, is we are going to take our pennies that came in the packet. And I'm going to trace out uh, the penny onto my piece of felt. And so I'm going to go ahead and get started with that. And I want to trace out four different uh, penny cutouts. And then we're going to cut those out. So I'm going to go ahead and start doing that. And then we've got Laura doing that as well. So we have a question in the q and a it says how much water is needed and uh yeah thanks maria just enough to soak the felt so it doesn't need to be a lot um i just have like a glass of drinking water that i'm going to pour a little bit into my bowl not much at all All right, so I am done tracing. So, oh, Laura's way ahead of me. <laughs> I'm gonna go okay. ahead and get started on cutting my, my felt <laughs> circles out. And this felt is gonna serve as the separator um, in our battery. When you're cutting them out, it doesn't need to be perfect. Um, just we just need the the felt to help separate our uh, penny and our washer. And it looks like there's another question. What do we need? Um, and so I think the um, what's needed is what's on the uh, first page of this worksheet that was given. And so uh, the list of things that's needed from home is a bowl, a paper towel, salt, white vinegar, water, 
a spoon, a marker or a pen, um, a pair of scissors, and then the materials that came with the packet. And uh, I'm not sure where it says that sugar is needed. Um, there shouldn't be any sugar needed. This is really just um, uh, just salt that that's needed here. All right, how's everyone's cutting going? Mine is not, I'm, I got distracted by the questions. <laughs> All right, so if you're ahead of me, uh, you can go ahead and start mixing your own electrolyte. And so the components in the electrolyte are water, vinegar, and salt. And you can be creative here. You can really uh, just mix in whatever proportions you want. Um, but in terms of amount, Laura will show you here, but you don't need all that much water, um, just like even a, a glass of water will do. Um, and you're just going to make sure that you have some water, some vinegar, and then you're just going to pour some salt in there and then stir it all up. Yeah, so I just have half a glass of water, pour in a little bit of vinegar. That was probably a few tablespoons, but it doesn't need to be perfect. and then some salt. That's probably a teaspoon or two. And then stir it up until the salt dissolves. And as you're mixing your own electrolyte, it's okay if not all of your salt is dissolved. If there's still a little bit at the bottom of the container that you're mixing in, that's still okay. All right, so I'm just mixing mine up. All right, I think mine's mostly good. So if you have your electrolyte mixed up, uh, you can start soaking the pieces of felt that we just cut out. And so you're just gonna drop them right in the bowl or, or your glass or whatever it is that you're using to mix your electrolyte. So I'm gonna go ahead and just drop mine in. Laura's doing hers as well. And we really just want these soaked through. So um, just kind of make sure that they're getting fully wet and we've got another question. So in the electrolyte, you're putting uh, salt and vinegar and water, and it doesn't matter how much of each. Um, and so really you're just wanting to make sure that you have a little bit of all of that in there. Um, so yeah, I, I put in maybe like a quarter of a cup of water and maybe like two or three tablespoons of vinegar and then like one or two teaspoons of salt, but it really doesn't need to be all that much. All right, so my felt has been soaking for about a minute and that's probably plenty. So once I'm done with that, I wanna take the circles of felt out and I'm just gonna drop them onto a paper towel um, because I don't want them soaking wet, but I also don't wanna squeeze all of the electrolyte out that we just soaked our, our uh, separators in. So I'm just pulling my felt out and just kind of uh, just letting it sit on the paper towel um, just so they're not like soaking wet and dripping. And now we're gonna make, now that we have all of our uh, separators sitting on our paper towel, we're gonna make the first stack of our battery. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a washer and I'm gonna place my washer, which is the kind of like silvery donut looking thing. I'm gonna place that directly on my piece of foil. Hey, so let me have a quick question. Um, is there any substitute for felt if you don't have any? Um, 
You know, a paper towel would probably also work. It might also work if you have like cardboard from the edge of a cereal box or something like that. Or uh, construction paper might work as well. All right, so um, first, uh, yeah, so we've got our washer sitting on our foil. Um, and then on top of the washer, I'm gonna place one piece of felt. So now our separator's going in, and then I'm gonna put one penny on top of that piece of felt. And so at this point, we've got kind of a mini battery going already. And so we have uh, an anode, a separator, and a cathode. And so we do have a difference in chemical potential between our anode and our cathode. And so that does mean that there should be a little bit of uh, this like electrical force that will help uh, generate some current. And so Laura has a, a voltmeter. And so she's going to test um, how much potential difference there is in her battery. Let's see, you can see the number. Is that mirrored? I can't Good. really read it, but okay. yeah. Point nine volt. <laughs> <laughs> um, so almost one volt in this battery. Nice. Um, if you don't have a washer, then I'm not sure. It sounds like um, this participant may not have the activity packet. So the activity packet should have come with four washers and four pennies and the LED light bulbs for this. Um, so I'm not sure how to help here, but um, the, the thing that's special about these washers is that they are zinc plated. And so what we really need is the zinc on the surface of this washer. Um, so that's why everyone got sent the, the, special, um, the special materials in the kit. So we have one part of our stack made. Uh, and so I'm going to go ahead and try to light up my red LED. So it's pretty small. And then if you can uh, see here, there's two wires on this LED. One is longer and one is shorter. And so I want to make sure I'm going to bend this a little bit, uh, kind of gently, so that my longer wire is sticking out a little bit like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and touch the long wire on the top of my penny and this short wire directly onto the aluminum foil. And so when I do that, if I have enough voltage, I should um, be able to see uh, the LED light up. Laura, are you able to get yours to light up? Nope. Yeah. And that, that's Me pretty either. expected. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, but I only had 0.9 volts. And so that's usually not enough to actually be able to light up any LED light bulb. Yeah, so what we can do next is we can build another stack. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go in the same order. So we have right now sitting on top of our foil, we have zinc, washer, separator, and penny. And then we're going to do right on top of that the same exact pattern. So then we're going to go washer, separator, penny. All right. Laura, what voltage are you getting now? Um, now about 1.1. .1. So my second stack didn't increase very much. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. I mentioned that. But Ooh, all right. With my second <laughs> stack, I was able to light up my LED. So I'll try the I'm gonna, LED. I'm going to try and. Um, yeah, show you all what I'm seeing here. So yeah, 
Um, Maybe you can see that on the camera. If I take it off, you can see that the LED uh, is not lit up. And then if I put my LED back on, so I have my long wire on top of the penny, my short wire on the foil, my LED lights up a little bit. How's everyone else's going? I also got lights. Nice. <laughs> I did not yet. I think That's my okay. felt, my, my felt got a little dry. Maybe mm. try, try re-soaking. Yeah, that's a good, that, uh, that does happen quite a bit. Um, sometimes your um, separator will dry out and you need to re-soak them. And also make sure that you're putting the right um, wire of the LED on top of the penny and the, the long one on top of the penny and the short one on the foil. Yeah, and if yours isn't lighting up yet, that's also to be expected. Um, sometimes it doesn't work with just two stacks. So again, um, what Maria just said, make sure the long wire is on top of the penny and the short wire is on the foil. And then also, if that's not working, you can try re-soaking your separators in the electrolyte solution. So mine took three stacks to get the LED to light up. Yeah, so if you wanna go ahead and try um, a third, so I'm just gonna go again in the same order, zinc washer, my separator, and then my penny. And I'm gonna try lighting up my red LED again. Oh, and now it's not working. And oh, it's it is lighting up now, but it's pretty dim. And so I think my um, separators might have uh, dried out again. So I'm going to go ahead and re-soak them. It's OK. It happens. I'm going to re-soak all of them while we're at it. And so if you've gotten your red LED to light up, uh, you can also try lighting up a different colored LED. Um, and so the red one should be the easiest one to light up. And so now that I've re-soaked my separators, I'm gonna go again. So I'm just going washer, separator, penny. So now with two, I'm gonna see if I can light up my red LED again. Mm, not quite there. I'll try a third one. Yep. So mine, mine took three stacks this time, and I have to rebuild it a few different times. I think it's probably the same thing where my uh, separator got dried out. The other thing is you can bend the very end of your wire so that you can push it onto the top of the penny um, kind of flat. And sometimes that helps. Yeah, so with three stacks now, I was able to get my, my red LED to light up. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing and I'm gonna try it with my yellow LED. So the yellow one also has a longer wire. I'm not sure if you can see that. Uh, and so I'm gonna make the longer, I'm gonna bend the longer wire up a little bit and I'm gonna try lighting up my yellow one. Ooh, I got the yellow one to light up too, nice. looking a little dim though, but it is there. It's lighting up. Olive, how's yours going? Going pretty well. Nice. All right. Four stacks. Ooh, four. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go ahead and do my fourth one too. So yeah, at this point, uh, you can just keep going in the same pattern. So it always goes washer, separator, penny, washer, separator, penny. And you can do that all the way through the, um, all the way through the, the four sets that you should have. Yeah, I will say the felts are drying up faster um, <laughs> than I thought. So I maybe leave them just a little bit. Ooh, yeah, I just got my yellow one to light up pretty bright. Nice. Ooh, you got the green one, Elise. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. 
Let me try the blue but again. How's everyone's going at home? Have people been able to get their LEDs lit up? I'm gonna try my green one as well. I'm gonna revet my felt. That's a good idea. I've had to do that a couple times now where I've had to re-soak my felt. All right, I'm gonna try my blue one. So the blue one is kind of the hardest one. The blue and the white one require more voltage. Um, and so it usually requires more stacks to be able to get the blue one and the white one to light up. Mm, my blue one is lighting up. It's a little dim, <laughs> but I can see it lighting up a little bit. I kind of have to like press the top wire down on top of the penny. Yeah, it helps if you like squeeze the stack a little bit. So push that top wire down and push the stack down. Hmm, my, my blue one um, lit up very dimly and then went out. So I'm guessing I need to re-soak my, <laughs> my felt again. Oh, my red one is still working. So that's good. Ooh, Maria, your blue one's really bright. The harder you push, the brighter it gets. <laughs> That's not a technical battery thing, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh, stack pressure is totally a thing. <laughs> yeah, better electrical contact as well. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna go, I'm deconstructing mine so I can re-soak all of my felt again. And then when I get to that point, I wanna try my white one. Oh. Laura, what voltage are you getting um, with your four stacks? Mine hasn't been increasing very much with additional stacks. Mine stays about one. So I've been having hmm. trouble getting it to. Interesting. All right, I'm rebuilding mine now. Have people at home been able to get yours to work? Do you want to write in the chat if you, in the Q&A, uh, if you've gotten your light bulbs to light up or not? Caitlin, it is a problem if we get too wet, right, the felt? So what can happen sometimes is if your felt is really, really wet uh, and kind of like dripping over the sides of your stack, that you'll create an electrical short circuit. And so you won't be able to um, light up your, your LED. All right, so I just re-soaked mine and um, Yay, built my Sandy. stack again. Yay, most of the colors worked. That's awesome. And the cardboard separators worked. Awesome. Good job. Oh, yes, my, it's, a, it's fun to wrap it with electrical tape, keep it together. You um, essentially have a little, little flashlight that you've made yourself. I love that it is really bright. That's awesome. I'm going to try my white one now. Let's see how we doing. Oh, my white one's not working. I wonder if I made mine a little too soaking wet. Yeah, I think I did the same, Caitlin. I'm going to try my blue one though. Let's see. Oh, no, my blue one's not working anymore. Hmm? Get your red one to work on that stack? Yeah, the red one is working, but now it's super dim. Mm -hmm. And so I think I just made everything too wet. So I'm gonna at least like dry my, this is good. We're doing some live troubleshooting. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna dry my, uh, I'm gonna dry my, my pennies and my washers off a little bit. Okay, um, I got the white one. Nice. Oh, that's really bright. Um, Something else you can try is you can try doing two LEDs at the same time. Cool. And Challenge so accept it, Caitlin. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, <laughs> Elite Gears is looking pretty good. So yeah, the way you can do that is you can, I would maybe start with like the red and the yellow because they require the lowest <laughs> amount of voltage. 
And yeah, you put the top wires of both of them on top of the penny at the same time. And you can see if you can light up oh. um, two at the same time. Yeah, folks at home have gotten all of their colors to light up. You can try doing two at the same time and then yeah, drop in the in the chat in the Q&A if you've been able to do two at the same time. All right, I'm now rebuilding my stacks after having dried out all of my washers and pennies. Elif, have you gotten two yet? Two demons. So I'm re um, nice. soaking my belts. That's see. pretty good. And then I know that um, some folks at home who got their activity kits, I think maybe they had someone else in their house also request an activity kit. And so what you can try doing is if you have um, more of these materials at home, you can go even more than four stacks. So you can try going um, up to like five or six stacks, or you can even combine your stack with um, your maybe your sibling who's doing this with you. And so you can make like a really tall one uh, and see if you can uh, light up a really bright white LED or a really bright blue LED. Um, and then just something to keep in mind if you're gonna build even taller than four, is that the stack can kind of topple over. And so you just need to be really careful because it can wobble a little bit. All right, so I just rebuilt my stack. We're gonna test again with my red LED and see how I did. All right, my red one is bright again. So that's pretty good. Now I'm gonna try lighting up the white one and see if I can get that. No, oh, my white one's still not working. <laughs> My blue one's going okay. Laura, how's yours doing? Getting the yellow one pretty dim, but seems like it's pretty finicky about how the LED wire is pressed on there. Mm -hmm. mm. It's just I don't have good contact somewhere in my stack. Oh yeah, when I, I pressed my stack down really hard and I was able to get my red LED lit up a little bit better. So it's possible that I have some bad electrical contact there. Um, there are two questions in the yeah. chat. Which light needs the highest voltage? Caitlin, do you know? It should be the white light that needs the highest voltage. So the white and the blue are the most difficult to light up. And then the red and the yellow are the easiest. And then the green's kind of in the middle. It goes with the the order of the rainbow, the Roy G. Biv order, uh, from easiest to hardest. Yeah. And then there's another question. Um, do we know what material in the penny is making the electricity go through? Would it work with other coins? Um, Laura, I'm going to let you answer that one. Um, yeah, so you need the copper as your cathode from the penny. Um, it actually has a copper oxide surface layer on it. Um, and you're reducing that. Um, and that's where your electrical charge is. I don't, you might be able to do with other um, coins. Do we know which, like for a, a quarter or a dime or a nickel? Um, are those real silver or are those zinc? Aren't they zinc or, and, or nickel plated? Yeah, I was thinking nickel plated on those. Nickel oxide might work. I haven't tried it. Um, if it's zinc, you wouldn't expect it to work because then it's the exact same as what the layer on our washer. Um, right. But that's something you can try out um, if you have some more coins at home. That's a good question. Yeah. And then 
something else that can affect um, the kind of potential difference between your anode and your cathode, or in this case, your washer and your penny, is if um, you have a lot of um, kind of like gunk on the penny, uh, it will like that part is not really um, participating in the chemical reaction. Um, and so if the penny is looking like really dirty or something, then you're not getting as much of the copper oxide surface that's participating in the reaction. And then you're not really able to generate the same potential as if you had a cleaner penny. And so that's something else to try is if you have like a dirty penny at home or a clean penny at home, you can see if they will light up the light bulb to a different brightness. How yeah. much voltage is required for the blue one? We have a question. Do you guys know? I want to say it's 3.2. I can double check on the box, but <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's a little bit higher than the red one, which I think is about 2.2 volts required. Something we didn't say in the discussion about which materials or coins you can make a battery out of is that um, kind of the chemical potential is a inherent property of the material. And so that's, you have to choose the material based on the voltage it can give you. Um, and so that's why you wouldn't expect um, like a zinc washer and a zinc coin uh, because they have the same uh, chemical potential composition, which gives them the same chemical potential. Yeah, so if you've gotten your um, LEDs to light up at home, um, has anyone, maybe answer in the chat, has anyone been able to uh, get there to get two lit up at once? Well, that is actually a really good question. If you try to do both the red and blue lights at the same time, only the red lights. When we remove the red wire, the blue one lights up. That is a good question. So when we're trying to do two lights at the same time, we need more um, voltage. We need like a higher chemical potential essentially um, to be able to do both. Um, it would be like if you were trying to charge uh, two phones from the same, um, and that's not really a good example actually because the grid is different. So <laughs> uh, it, you just require a, like more chemical potential to be able to charge up two things at the same time. And so the the red one requires less voltage to light up. And so um, you're kind of like splitting the, the current between these two uh, LEDs. And so the red one will light up first. And then if you take the red one away, that means that there's enough uh, voltage and there's current to be able to supply to the blue LED so that one can light up next. Um, hopefully that jumbled answer made sense. <laughs> yeah, has anyone, um, so it sounds like someone was trying red and blue. Has anyone been able to successfully light up uh, red and yellow at the same time? Um, you want it just enough soak so it is not like making your battery pack wet. It might uh, just be yeah. some trial and error to figure out if it needs to be soaked more or less. Um, because it can go either way. If the electrolyte's dripping between the layers, you'll lose some voltage that way. Um, but Ooh, also if it's, not wet, <laughs> if it's not wet enough, you won't be able to move the charge. Yeah, when also when you're trying to press on your battery, if your felt is a little too soaked, then it could also get the liquid out and create that short circuit as Caitlin was describing. Sounds like some folks were able to uh, combine their stacks uh, and were able to get a red and a yellow to light up together. So that's pretty cool. Um, something else, if you're um, trying to combine your stacks at home, and your stack is starting to get really tall, you might find it difficult to get the LED wire to reach from your top of your penny to your foil. And so something you can do there is, I'm gonna show you on my screen. 
So you can actually, uh, let's if like pretending that my red LED wire was not gonna reach down to my foil, I could actually uh, turn my foil upwards because we need the bottom wire to make contact with um, the foil. And so I can actually uh, turn my foil upwards. I'm gonna do this in profile actually, so that I can touch the top wire to the penny and uh, just fold up the foil so that you can then make uh, everything reach together. I'm not sure if people are able to see that. That might be a little bit better. Yeah. So if you're trying to combine stacks at home, that's a that's a good way to try that um, because otherwise your your stack is getting so tall that you can't actually um, make contact between your bottom wire uh, and your foil, which is helping to collect all of the current from your stack. Awesome. Sounds like we got some other people who are able to light up the red and the yellow. Uh, very cool. I still have not been able to do that. So you're better at making batteries than I am. <laughs> it makes sense that the yellow is dim because that requires a higher voltage than the red one. So that means that you know the it's the same voltage, but uh, the red is brighter at whatever voltage that the yellow one can light up. So yeah, we also have, um, uh, if you want to redo this at home, uh, you should have gotten a third sheet in your packet, which has a, a picture of a, a poster that we would normally um, have in person at, at this event. Um, but obviously, um, we're doing this over Zoom. And so uh, this poster has the instructions for all of the materials that you need to be able to do this again. And so it's really just um, the pennies, the washers, the felt that you cut out yourself or cardboard, um, aluminum foil, these LED light bulbs that we provided, and then your electrolyte solution that you mix with water, salt, and vinegar. And this has the steps on it as well. So you can follow along um, at home and uh, do this again, or you can also try with different coins um, if you wanted to try that out or try with like dirty pennies or like try cleaning some pennies and then doing it. So there's a lot of really cool experiments you can you can try to do um, just by uh, using some pretty common household materials. Soft copy of the paper. Yes, we should be able to, I'm gonna actually ask um, the event organizers if uh, when we post the recording of this, if we can also uh, add a PDF to that. Um, so hopefully that's a possibility. Great, yeah, we can absolutely send a, a PDF of the um, uh, uh, both worksheets that were sent in the packet. That's so cool, Sandy, daisy chaining the lights. Great idea. Nice. All right, so that kind of brings us to the end of the activity. Hopefully everyone was able to at least get their red one lit up. Um, and yeah, thanks everyone for joining and uh, hopefully you get to uh, make, some, make some batteries at home with the <laughs> skills you just learned. All right, thanks everyone. Do we do other events? Um, <laughs> well, sometimes. Uh, in the past, we've done um, the, the science festival. So we've done Discovery Day before uh, with the same activity. And um, we've done some other uh, kind of science education activities, uh, like Expanding Your Horizons is, we, is one that we've done in the past. Um, we're always looking for more opportunities to be able to connect with the community and kind of bring science into people's homes. So uh, this was a really good one because we could all do it from home and we could send the activity packets in, uh, ahead of time. Uh, so we'll, you know, still be on the lookout for those kinds of opportunities in the future. Great. Glad everyone have fun. <laughs> all right. Uh, with that, I think we're going to go ahead and sign off. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thanks for joining. <laughs>